Good morning or good evening, everyone, depending on where you are. Welcome to this uh, ORF and uh, TAP organized panel on Taiwan India trade investment, technological, and health cooperation. Uh, first, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Quantin um, Chen from Taiwan Action Foundation. Um, Taiwan Action Foundation is a think tank and a nonprofit uh, foundation working to make Taiwan more sustainable, diverse, and inclusive place. Our policy research and public uh, advocacy is focused on areas of particular importance to sustainable development of Taiwan. Uh, with the particular on the new Taiwan policy, uh, Taiwan Social and uh, Bilingual uh, Country Plan. So I in this important session today, which reflects on three essential cooperation area, um, yet under discuss in you know, a relationship between these two democratic nations, under its renewed and more focused uh, southbound policy, Taiwan leadership uh, is actively seeking to deep, deepen friendship and expand trade, technical, technological, and sustainable development, uh, driving exchange with target countries such as um, great country India. Uh, confidence steps such as the sign of the bilateral investment agreement between both nations in 2018 has already paved the way for Taiwanese local business to commit more than 2.3 billion US dollars and create more than 65,000 jobs up to date. Um, presently highlighted by our foreign minister, Joseph Wu, um, Taiwan's successful COVID-19 uh, response has Farther created a new um, Taiwan moment in both public and policy uh, domain in India and the world. So this momentum needs to be maintained by initiating engagement in areas that India has already prioritized, such as technology and techniques uh, tech in the ICT, healthcare, agriculture, and food processing. Um, a few of which we are going to discuss further in detail. Um, I hope. Uh, the opinions and perspective of our experts in this panel today would add more uh, clarity and drive to India-Taiwan relations under a broader and more inclusive framework of Indo-Pacific. So, uh, as we have limited time in our hands, I would now like to briefly introduce our uh, fellow panelists. I'm glad to welcome um, uh, Ms. Christy Shi, um, Ms. Trisha Ray, and Mr. Woman Korean as our uh, panelists today. Um, our first speaker, uh, Ms. Shi, is the Associate Research Fellow and Director of Taiwan ASEAN Center at the Zhonghua Institute of Economic Research. Uh, Research Institute established under the guidance and planning of the Council of Economic uh, Planning and Development, uh, entrusted by the Executive Yuan. She uh, expertise in topics related to international organizations, international trade law, uh, dispute settlement, and gender and development issues. And today we will be talking about commercial ties between India and Taiwan uh, in this session. So uh, with no further ado, I would like to uh, invite Mr. Xu for uh, his um, speech for today. Okay. Um, sorry. Okay, thank you very much um, for these nice works. So um, I'm very honored to uh, join other experts for today's uh, session uh, on such a timely, important issue. Uh, I'll speak about the bilateral relations, but in a broader in a broader context. Um, in Taiwan, since early 2000, when uh, for the first time um, Taiwan's Ministry of Economic Affairs began to prioritize India as one of the most important emerging markets, we have witnessed in the past years growing interest and willingness from both sides to improve bilateral ties in various aspects including trade, investment, tourism, education, and technology. In particular, in the past five years, as mentioned by the moderator, more Taiwan's uh, large and high-tech company have been invested in India and began to build the so-called smartphone in the, uh, industry cluster. Uh, but it's not yet full supply chain. That means we have a lot more, more work to do. 
this new trend will shape a different India-Taiwan economic partnership. So I think there is never a better time than now, not five years ago, not 10 years ago, to discuss the importance of strengthening Indian-Taiwan relations. When we talk about um, enhancing Indian-Taiwan relations, collaborations and partnership, there are multi-levels and possibilities of them. The first is cooperation under the Quad or Quad Plus framework. The Quad has become the centerpiece of the US, Japan, Australia, and India's uh, Indo-Pacific strategy. It is also getting increasingly important for other countries in the region. Taiwan is not a Quad member or partner, but due to Taiwan's shared value and like-mindedness, it is supported by the US Biden administration and Japan's Suga government to play a certain role in some of the issues related to Quad's core concern. Just to name a few, such as building the resilient uh, global supply chains, consorted uh, action to fight against the COVID-19 pandemic, and co-development of new technology, innovation, and, co and green transformation. India and Taiwan can work as an issue-based coalition, either bilaterally, trilaterally or as a multi-multilateral to work with other like-minded countries in the region on some of this issue. Secondly, India and Taiwan can work on regional issues together with other Southeast Asian countries and South Asian countries. Currently, the most important issue in this region is, of course, economic recovery post the pandemic, and fast vaccination to protect lives from the COVID-19 virus and various variants. It is also important to get in prepared for development of localized supply chains of COVID vaccines and other life-saving equipment and material. India is an important neighbor to countries in Southeast Asia and also South Asia. Indian, uh, for example, can provide an alternative in these countries to not welcome China's vaccine diplomacy and want to have more choices. Taiwan, on the other hand, have comprehensive networks of Taishang, meaning Taiwan business people and their manufacturing operations in all over this country. India and Taiwan can reach out and provide vaccines, medicines and equipments to protect lives in the region. As a matter of fact, some Taiwanese companies in ASEAN and India since last year have already expanded their manufacturing lines to protect to produce medical masks, protect, uh, protective clothing, and other products to help address the urgent needs in local community. Thirdly, uh, I would like to address this point uh, on bilateral relations. India and Taiwan should work bilaterally to make the most of their strengths, potentials, and high complementarities. In the past three years, the amount of Taiwan's investment in India has reached its historical record. An increasing number of Taiwan companies have established or are establishing or expanding their operations in India to assemble and manufacture products such as iPhones and other high-tech electronic products used to be manufactured in China or elsewhere in Southeast Asia. Furthermore, one Taiwan company has established a high-tech industrial park in Bangalore. Its target is to attract 120 Taiwan's SME, small and medium enterprises to set up their operations in the park. In this regard, Taiwan is playing an important role in realizing Prime Minister Modi's Making India initiative and forming of global supply chains in India. India and Taiwan can strengthen this partnership and work even more, for example, to co-develop human talents and necessary high-quality infrastructures in India. This will help both countries to address their shared strategic challenges, one of which is to enhance economic re resilience by reducing dependence on China. I give you some examples. According to Taiwan statistics, in, two, in the year 2000, there were only around 650 Indian professionals working in Taiwan. In May this year, the number increased to around 4,000. 
the number of Indian students studying in Taiwan also increased significantly. In the year 2017 and 2018, Taiwan worked with Indian government to provide intensive training programs in Xinzhu city of Taiwan on smartphone software design and technical applications to senior technical managers and software design, uh, designers and engineers from India. This area should be a priority for India and Taiwan to enhance cooperation in the future. And uh, among this, there are other programs that um, Taiwan has been focusing under the new South Bank policy. A lot of them address to further cooperation with India. I believe that can be a starting point for two countries to work together closely than before. So with this, I um, close my talk. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Shi, for your um, for your shares on the your insights. Um, we have um, Ms. Trisha Ray as our second speaker. She's an associate fellow at OIF's Technology and Media Initiative. Her research focuses on geotech, the security implications of emerging technologies, AI governance, and norms and lethal autonomous weapon systems. Um, she's also a member of the UNESCO's Information Accessibility Working Group, and today she will be focusing on tech cooperations between uh, India and Taiwan. Uh, the floor is all yours. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chen. I hope I'm audible. Um, it's, it's a pleasure to be a part of this important session. And India and Taiwan have had years of like increasing collaboration in science and technology. For instance, in 2019, the Indo-Taiwan Joint Research Center on AI and Machine Learning was set up at IIT Ropar. Um, there's also an ongoing India-Taiwan program of cooperation in science and technology that covers areas like AI, IoT, big data, cybersecurity, green tech, and biotech. There has also been, um, as Ms. Shu pointed out, uh, a lot of promising growth in business-to-business -business partnerships in the electronics and telecommunications sectors. Um, that said, there is still a world of potential for closer ties in the tech sector, and I want to focus on two specific areas in my intervention, namely uh, 5G and semiconductors, both incidentally also a big priority point in the Quad and the Indo-Pacific agenda as well. Uh, India is um, a massive telecommunications market, and it is expected to become the world's second largest 5G market in the coming decade. 5G is also key to its uh, broader vision for a digital India that brings its entire population into the fourth industrial revolution. Now, the government's efforts, um, supply chain efforts in 5G have taken a two-pronged approach. This has evolved, especially in the last two years. Uh, and the first of these two prongs is creating assessment criteria to determine trustworthiness of vendors. Uh, for instance, in March this year, the Department of Telecommunications mandated that telecom service providers use only trusted products in their networks uh, per designation by the National Cybersecurity Coordinator. And in this vein, the DOT has built a portal that will list these trusted suppliers. Uh, and the set of criteria, uh, they could be informative also for other countries' efforts because several countries are trying to figure out what like, trustworthy means in this space uh, beyond just like specific country targeted approaches because the, the end goal of all of these measures is for a more secure 5G ecosystem. Um, and so far, India's approach to untrusted vendors has been a soft ban, uh, where uh, notably Chinese vendors um, 
it's nearly impossible for them to participate in trials and partner with Indian telcos, although there is no so-called explicit ban yet. Um, the second prong, the first was uh, assessment. The second is uh, fostering local innovation. So the, this is also part of the make in India policy. And for instance, in public procurement, uh, there is a preference for bidders that provide equipment with 50% or more local content. This is with the aim of promoting you know, local manufacturing and innovation. Uh, additionally, in the 5G space, um, the Department of Telecommunications a few months ago released the list of telcos that had been greenlighted to conduct trials for 5G. And one of the four telcos that were approved, Reliance Geo, is conducting trials with its own indigenous technology. So that's a promising space as well. Uh, Taiwan, of course, was not only one of the first countries to lay out a blueprint for its 5G rollout, I believe in 2013, uh, but it has also been vocal about the threat uh, from reliance on Chinese vendors. As Digital Minister RJ Tang said last year, there is no such thing as pure private companies in China. From the perspective of the PRC, the ruling party can change your leadership whenever the situation is intense. Um, in fact, Taiwan's timely 5G rollout proves that a fast and secure 5G rollout is possible without relying on the cheaper options provided by uh, China-based vendors. The second area, semiconductors, which are key not just to 5G, but the electronics industry, automotives, green tech, quite a range of sectors. And the fragility of global semiconductor supply chains is amply evident in the current global chip crisis, uh, which experts say is due to the combined shocks of, of course, the US-China trade war and the pandemic, among other factors. Uh, India, of course, is a major electronics consumer and manufacturer and its consumer electronics market stood at nearly 11 billion US dollars in 2019 and is expected to double in the next five years. So it's a huge market and growing. Uh, India is home to a, a fair number of semiconductor firms, but they mostly specialize in design. Uh, additionally, the government identified 10 years ago now that there is a need for a domestic uh, fabrication facility, and it issued a fresh call for proposals last year. Uh, this renewed push is also backed by substantially larger chunk of funding than the last major push a few years ago. Um, of course, setting up a semiconductor fab facility is a long-term enterprise. Uh, so the current ship chip shortages, unfortunately, India's industry still have to contend with. Um, but I would say that in addition to just setting up a fabrication facility, there are also other challenges uh, that would need to be addressed through policy and investment, including uh, shipping costs due to supply chain issues, um, as well as uh, patching up issues in essential infrastructure like electricity and water. So this should also be a part of India's longer term plan to attract its wish list of semiconductor manufacturers to the country. Uh, I'll end here and I look forward to the discussion. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Ray, for um, comprehending such complex and essential, to essential topics in a short time. Um, we definitely all agree that 5Gs and um, semiconductor industries are highly associated. And um, lastly, um, I would like to, um, uh, last but not the least, Mr. Woomer uh, Korean will be our last speaker who is focusing on health cooperation between India and Taiwan. Uh, Ms. Korean is a senior fellow and head of health initiative at a, uh, ORF, uh, working on issues related to healthcare, nutrition, gender, and poverty, and has collaborated with various prestigious organizations for the same. Um, as the organized 
as an organizer, as a side, one hour to the panel, um, I would um, uh, kindly request the speaker to uh, stick with the time of 10 minutes. So without uh, further ado, I would, def I would like to give the floor to uh, Mr. Woman uh, Korean. Thank you, Mr. Chen and colleagues from the Taiwan Asia Exchange Foundation for the opportunity to share my views. I have learned a lot from the discussion so far. As colleagues pointed out before, Indian government's Taiwan policy is directed towards encouraging exchanges in trade, investment, tourism, culture, education, and other people-to-people -people areas. The global pandemic puts health firmly into this set of mutual interest areas. Traditionally, commercial collaborations between Indian and Taiwanese companies in the pharmaceutical space focused on tapping into the Western markets. The pandemic has provided an opportunity to make health sector collaboration between the countries more broad-based. Taiwan was one of the first nations to provide relief material to India during its devastating second pandemic wave. Under the Taiwan Can Help and His Helping program, Taiwan donated 17 million medical facial masks and a considerable number of personal protective equipment to India during the COVID outbreak. In May and June 2021, India received a considerable number of oxygen concentrators and cylinders from Taiwan to alleviate the COVID surge. In addition, 15 cryogenic ISO tanks were donated, all these contributing and helping the emergency pandemic response immensely. The pandemic emergency help is complemented by other considerable medical and public health collaborations from joint research to joint production of medical products. National Research Institute of Chinese Medicine of Taiwan developed a dietary supplement in 2020, which reduces the chances of severe COVID illness. NRICM collaborated with the Ayush Ministry of India to boost cooperation in traditional medicines. And in February 2021, India made a financial contribution to the NRICM for the same. Despite being an advanced capitalist economy, Taiwan has a strong component of traditional medicine in its health system. And this collaboration will be immensely beneficial to India's efforts to develop a, an evidence-based approach to mainstream the traditional medicine footprint within the health system through the Ayush ministry. The Taiwan-India Joint Research Center on Artificial Intelligence, mentioned by Trisha earlier, organized by two universities from Taiwan and India, along with the IIT Ropa, has worked on a smart pandemic prevention system, which is currently deployed on the home campuses. It utilizes face recognition and body temperature data collected from closed institutions, such as schools, college campuses, and there lies a possibility to extend it to hospitals and other hotspots to monitor the spread, spread of the COVID-19 virus. Taiwan as a world-leading manufacturer of medical equipment could prove to be a key element in strengthening ties between the two countries in the health sector. Nan Liu Enterprise of Taiwan, one of the largest manufacturers of medical fabric and hygiene products in Asia, built up a factory in Gujarat for producing non-woven fabric to produce facial masks and PPEs. Karma, a Taiwan-based company producing wheelchairs and other medical equipment, has a production base in India for several years. Taiwan External Trade Development Council in India has established an online, online platform introducing all Taiwanese companies manufacturing or supplying products fighting COVID-19, enhancing these partnerships and incentivizing investments will be a crucial task for both sides going forward. However, when it comes to medical education, Indian students prefer China over Taiwan. Ministry of Human Resource Development data suggests that more than 23,000 Indian students pursued medicine in China and almost none in Taiwan. Low cost could be the predominant factor at play. The pandemic has shifted the public narrative from cost to quality, and this may play a role in improving ties in the medical education as well as medical manufacturing sectors. Recruiting Indian students to Taiwan to major in medicine and public health related fields is still an untapped area. Reportedly, the number of international students going to Taiwan 
and also the number of scholarships given to Indian students to study in Taiwan are the highest this year when compared to previous years. With the Quad expressing a more muscular health policy agenda in the Indo-Pacific, in part as a response to COVID-19, Taiwan-India health cooperation may be entering a new era. A recalibrated relationship in the health sector will be certainly mutually beneficial in a situation when supply chain resilience becomes a global priority. Over dependence on China for medical raw materials, for example, has impacted India's pharmaceutical manufacturing during the pandemic. In addition, when compared to the template of reluctant data sharing followed by China, Taiwan offers the world a much more transparent alternative model in pandemic response. Taiwan used its digital infrastructure effectively against the pandemic. India and indeed many countries in the region can learn from Taiwan's experience as they get ready for the next wave. Leveraging its strong digital health e ecosystem, the way Taiwan disseminated and used pandemic-related information stood in stark contrast with how China, for example, handles such information. Taiwan's early response is a pandemic success story and the country was able to quickly control the large wave that followed early this year. However, the opportunities of cross-learning for other countries is severely limited by the status of Taiwan in the international platforms like the WHO. While all the other Quad members have more openly supported Taiwan in its demand for an enhanced role at the WHO, India has not yet vocally supported Taiwan in its WHO campaigns. Taiwan has a complex interdependence with China. China is its uh, largest trading partner. There is an interesting parallel in India's pharmaceutical trade position here. Despite tensions, China is a major source, of, source for uh, bulk drugs for most Indian pharmaceutical companies. However, given Taiwan's leadership position in global technology supply chains, in particular semiconductors, any enhanced cooperation in the area of health and medical technology will also be in India's self-interest. For example, the United States trades more with Taiwan than with India, and cooperation will offer India a piece of this pie while possibly expanding it even further. Commercial partnerships between India and Taiwan outside of the health sector are already concentrated in information and communications technology. Given the fact that Taiwan is a major hub of high-tech manufacturing, the primary arena of cooperation between Taiwan and India can be as a major partner in the development of India's nascent digital health ecosystem and telehealth infrastructure across the country. The pandemic has acted as a catalyst and has made clear this is an unmet need across the country. This remains an area where both governments and business communities of both Taiwan and India can cooperate and mutual, uh, mutually benefit. Vaccine development is another possible area of cooperation. In July, Taiwan issued emergency use authorization to an indigenously developed Medigen vaccine and a political controversy followed. The sequence of events has strong parallels in the uh, development and emergency approval of Covaxin in India. These are There are two areas where the countries could collaborate. One is exploring possibilities of using India's production capacity to expand Medigen production once the trials are completed. Secondly, the medical regulators of both countries will gain from an ongoing partnership since they are facing similar, facing similar trade-offs and similar challenges as the dynamic situation unfolds. Lastly, I feel that the demand to invite Taiwan to attend WHA as an observer and to systematically include Taiwan's participation to WHO technical meetings, mechanisms and activities is a reasonable one. Also given the remarkable ability the country has demonstrated in handling the pandemic, the world deserves to learn from Taiwan's experience. As the previous chairperson of the WHO's executive board, India has already lost that opportunity once. Taiwan's demand is in a way a reversal to the status quo. As Taiwan was an observer at the WHO from 28, 2008 to 2016, it will be a great beginning to a new era of India-Taiwan health partnership if India were to more actively support Taiwan, Taiwan and its WHO campaign as many of India's strategic partners are already doing. Thank you.
you're you're on mute, Mr. Chen. Thank you very much, Mr. Korean. Thank you for your uh, insightful opinion and uh, the information you provided is extremely um, insightful. I, I I also myself has learned a lot from you uh, because usually when we when we talk about the relationship between India and Taiwan, we focus a lot on uh, trade agreements, on, um, on, on issues related to ICT. But um, you mentioned about education, especially for the med medical education and how this, uh, the scholarship and fellowship uh, mean to the students from India and from Taiwan as well. Uh, that is also a very important uh, point of view because so power uh, that is presented from India is not just ICT, but also uh, other potential industries, for example, pharmaceutical, uh, vaccines, biotech related um, uh, uh, companies as well. Um, thank you very much for all of the uh, speaker panelists today. Um, I believe we still have 10 to 15 minutes, so I will open the floor for the discussion. Um, first of all, I would um, um, kindly um, um, ask, uh, for example, uh, Ms. Xi, if you have um, any uh, comments on uh, um, uh, our associate uh, fellow, um, Ms. Ray, or from our senior fellow, Ms. Uh, Mr. Korean. Yes, um, I appreciate uh, comments from other two speakers, and I do agree that there is um, other aspects that we can further our collaboration uh, in addition to uh, the collaboration already existing in ICT and electronic, uh, electronic industry. Uh, because uh, for ICT and electronic in, uh, 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 industry, these are actually uh, driven by a uh, commercial by commercial uh, co uh, commercial contracts. Uh, our companies uh, move to India to invest to satisfy the demands of their clients. Probably the Apple in the U.S. and also uh, some uh, uh, Japanese brands. However, if we talk about um, a more collation in vaccine development, uh, both. Uh, both both speakers mentioned about this regard and also more collaboration in other other aspects. For example, uh, the medical education and also the 5G and uh, its R&D. I think that takes more uh, response and a uh, strong, uh, strong will from both, uh, from both government. I think Taiwan's government has been ready for further that kind of relation with India for years because uh, India is a priority of our under our uh, New South Bank policy. But, um, but Indian uh, government, the counterpart so far, um, as mentioned by as mentioned by by, by you too, that um, um, still have some concerns. So I believe uh, with strategic thinkers from both sides, we can um, create and develop an enabling environment for both government agency and ministries to uh, to st to step up and start uh, discussing about uh, start discussion. I think this is one of the very important that very can do after this uh, forum. Thank you very much, Ms. Chi. Uh, thank you for your comments. I believe uh, not just the government. Um, today, we have uh, a really good initiative uh, to start this dialogue. Um, I would like to um, ask Ms. Ray, um, do you have uh, any uh, comments on Ms. Chi or Mr. Korean's uh, presentation today? Yes, I mean, to carry on the thread of um, effort, more effort needed in the government to government side. So there has been like years of what I would characterize as like lowest common denominator style cooperation in science and tech. So a lot of joint research centers, there have been uh, quite a few prominent investment agreements between businesses but uh yes on these ra larger flagship issues that are coming up uh which are at the intersection or like the delicate intersection of tech and geopolitics um 
it's it's movement has been slow i mean that's part also because perhaps india itself is still figuring out its position in the space because first and foremost uh, the priority of the indian government is the growth and progress of its own citizens and so there is always like a balancing act between that and the security imperative so even in the 5g space for instance uh, the the one factor that really led to that major shift in india's policy on 5g was the galwan crisis that that strengthened the voices in the government that were calling for a more hawkish approach to china so perhaps a similar push is needed in other sectors as well thank you very much um miss ray for your comments uh, last but not least, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Korean if you have uh, any comments on uh, these two uh, uh, fellows, um, uh, scholars' uh, presentations, or if you have any questions as well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chen. Uh, I, I think I've been listening to uh, my other colleagues. I feel that, I mean, the Indo Taiwan relationship historically has been on a low plateau. I mean, there hasn't been much action, at least uh, in sectors related to health uh, in the previous uh, years. But uh, as, you would, as you would appreciate, uh, uh, the global pandemic is an inflection point in India, at least so far as uh, digital health is concerned. There were, there were arguments before that India hasn't reached that position in terms of physical infrastructure to focus on digital infrastructure. So the focus has been on expanding physical infrastructure. But now India is, uh, I mean, faced with uh, stark challenges and India is trying to leapfrog uh, its, its inadequacies in physical infrastructure by leveraging digital. So I see going forward this partnership exploding uh, and, 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 and deepening uh, uh, because uh, India is also, I mean, uh, the prosperous pockets of India uh, are, 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 are aging fast and uh, uh, digital uh, medical records, for example, will pay, play a very important role going forward and Taiwan's ex uh, uh, experience will uh, uh, no doubt help India uh, uh, inform these policies and also to to develop the digital backbone for any such endeavor. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Korean. Um, thank you all. Um, thank you all our colleagues for joining today's uh, panel. I would like to conclude that uh, this session, uh, but uh, this is indeed uh, a really um, insightful uh, discussions. I believe there are more than one single thing that we can do together. We, we, there are multiple uh, fields and uh, multiple, it requires multiple disciplines and uh, scholars and talents to work on this relationship, uh, this cooperations. And um, as um, Ms. Ray and Ms. Xi and Mr. Karin mentioned, in fact, those uh, are old interactual interactions. Uh, those are all connected. Um, we can take 5G away from semiconductors, and um, we cannot um, also um, take away trade power from the fields of uh, public health and um, high tech cooperation. So everything uh, is connected. And again, thank you all very much for joining today and um, for today's um, panel. Again, um, thank you very much for TEP and um, uh, the, the invitation today. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful afternoon, evening, or morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you very, very much. much. Okay. Bye bye.